Hi, I'm Robert, the developer of the Better Geiger. This is the Model S2, and the purpose of this video is to just give a little preview about um, the features and how the interface works and how to use it and, and stuff like that. Uh, at the moment, um, there might be some more features and changes added over time, but this is just a snapshot of, of what it looks like now as it is nearly ready to ship out uh, the first batch to the pre-orders. So, um, if you haven't seen it, uh, most of the big picture stuff is very similar to the S1. It's powered by two AA batteries, and it has it comes with a rubber protective case. It just pops in like that. Um, before there were basically an on-off. There was basically an on-off switch, a sound on-off switch and then one button to switch through the modes, and that was all there, there was in terms of controls and features. So it was very simple to use, which was the goal, but now uh, I've tried to add a few more features while still hopefully keeping it fairly simple and straightforward to operate and, and use and understand. So now it has six buttons, uh, settings, sound on, off, so that's the clicker. Uh, the middle, top middle is for going through the different displays, uh, seven or eight of them power on off and then uh, a left and right and up and down for for different things which you'll see in a minute so we'll start turn it on and there is a flicker that's just um, because of how the camera exposure works and how the LED works but in reality the flicker is not there it looks steady so uh, I don't know that there's a lot I can do about that well that's better okay so Right, there, that's the power on off and the, the count rate's a little higher than normal because I do have a, have a, a cesium source, a check source nearby. But uh, yeah, we'll start from, I'm just gonna cycle through here to the first mode, uh, which normally pops up with this first mode. So it has the larger display than the S1 uh, it shows the unit here, microsieverts per hour, and then there's a range indicator, same as before, where it shows basically normal, high, or danger, and it's a little bit arbitrary, but it's zero to one, uh, and uh, one to 10, and 10 and above microsieverts per hour. So that's how it's, how it's delineated, um, and I could get into details for why it was chosen like that, but that'll be in the manual, uh, explain more. There is now a battery indicator, but because it takes different types of batteries, it, it doesn't really know what type of battery is there, so it can't tell you the percentage of what's left. Like with a lithium ion, for example, it's very easy to do because it has a very predictable curve. But if you use alkaline or some different rechargeable AA batteries, they have different curves, so you can't know from checking the voltage what the uh, percent left is. So it just says the battery is okay. And if the battery were low, it would proactively uh, beep three times and say on the screen for a couple seconds, battery low, shutting down, and then it will shut down. So you don't have to wonder uh, whether or not it's going to act strange with low battery. Uh, this tells you which of the two alarms uh, are on or active. Uh, there are two alarms that can be set now, which was not the case with the S1. And then it has the large number um, showing the current reading in microsieverts per hour in this case. And yeah, this can show, so there are two types of alarms. There's the rate alarm, which is if the dose rate goes above a certain level, it'll, it'll alarm and beep until you confirm that it was heard with a button. And then it won't alarm again until the level has dropped down below the alarm threshold and then it goes up again, then it'll beep again. Uh, that's how the rate alarm works. There's also a sum alarm, which will trigger according to uh, the total amount of dose received since the device has been turned on. And you'll see more about setting them in just a minute. So now it's switched to millirem per hour, which is just a factor of 10 different. Uh, the rest is basically the same. This is now CPM, counts per minute. And you can see it reacts to the source. Um, put the clicker on. So this is the sound button. So all it does is turn the click sound on or off. So you can hear when the source gets close, it really screams. And when you move it away, it goes 
back down, but it's still a little bit close. So that is counts per minute. And so yeah, either alarm could be set and then there's this, the sum alarm, which said is, is since the device has been turned on, the total amount of dose it's, uh, it's received. The next mode is since power on. So it says since power on, the time it's been on, the total counts, uh, the average counts per minute, the average microsieverts per hour, and the total microsieverts since the device has been turned on, and it gives the conversion from millirem to microsieverts. And if you want to reset these numbers, you would press this button. So I'll press that a little longer. And then it says reset measurement and you can, so if you were to accidentally press this twice, it wouldn't do it, it would actually cancel it. Uh, or you press left to confirm the reset. Press that for a couple seconds and you see it's back to zero minutes and it's it's still got a number there for the average, but it's just from the last couple seconds. And the microsiever, it's the dose, total dose reset back to zero. And then the next mode is all time dose. So that's basically as long as this device has uh, ever been on, it takes all the uh, the total dose and adds it up. So you power it down, it'll save that number and then add to it next time it's turned on. And that's all the same information, just in different units. So it's microsiever, it's millisiever, it's millirem and rem. And it can be reset, uh, same as with the since uh, powered on. So you have, you know, a way to kind of track the dose, and, and if it's turned off by mistake or something, you you wouldn't necessarily lose it. And if you wanted to measure your exposure for a day or a week or whatever, uh, this could be reset and done in that way. Next is a dark mode, it just has a little flashing light, um, indicating that it's that it's still powered on, and that reduces the power a bit. Um, in the normal modes, I think it's about 80 hours or so with with typical alkaline batteries, and this would make it uh, a bit more. I don't know the exact number, probably around 100 or so, but um, I'll check those those numbers and put it in the data sheet. But uh, normally, it's about 80 hours with with typical alkaline batteries. A little more with with lithium, and a little less with rechargeables, depending on the type. So that's the dark mode, and then there's a developer data thing for a few numbers in case anything is uh, needs to be checked or, or whatever with how it's operating internally, but that's not really for users. And then we're back to the, to the start. So we've seen the clicks on and off power mode. Now we can go turn the sound off. We'll go to the settings and hopefully that's visible, but basically by this is a larger screen. Um, than the S1, and the sensor is exactly the same. So sensitivity and, and so forth is the same. But what is different is the firmware is, is improved and now it can handle higher rates. And it will now go up to about 100, well, not about, it'll go up to 100 millisieverts per hour uh, with a cesium source, whereas the previous one would go to 20 millisieverts per hour before maxing out. And this one also gives an overrange indicator where the other one would sort of show jumpy numbers and it would be pretty obvious that it was acting irrationally, but now it simply says uh, over range when it goes over range. So that's another improvement. Uh, so we're in the, we're in, I pressed the settings button to go into the, into the settings and now up, down, left, right has a new meaning. So um, up, down changes which thing is being modified and there's basically seven and in this little box, it tells you what you're changing with the left, right. So you go up, down to pick what you want to change and left, right to actually change it. So we have three for the rate alarm and three for the dose alarm, and then one for the smoothing. So this, this shows how quickly the screen will, um, uh, how, how quickly the number will react to changes in the level. Uh, some people get a bit, um, worried when they see the number uh, jumpy because they'll, there's kind of natural fluctuations or there's randomness to the number um, and they'll, they'll worry about that. So they should probably set it to slow and smooth. Uh, others want to see it react quickly if there's a change uh, to the environment and they're okay with some more jumpiness in the, in the normal uh, baseline readings. So they can basically choose those different modes to sort of lean it one way or another. So I'll leave it on slow and smooth. I'll go back to the top 
So rate alarm on off. So there's a little arrow here pointing to the off. So we can go on or off with the rate alarm. So I'll put the rate alarm on so I can show how it works in a minute. And I'll go down to the next option, which is the base number. Um, so this basically changes the leading digit, uh, one through nine, which now it's 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and then back around. Down one more, it changes the X10 number, which means um, basically is it 0 0.6, 6, 600. So it adds or, or removes a zero uh, to set the rate alarm to whatever. I'll leave it at 0 0.6 for now, so I can trigger it pretty easily with a check source. And then for a sum alarm, it's the same, but it's just microsieverts instead of microsieverts per hour. You can turn it on or off and set the base number, set the X10 number to whatever and then back to the smoothing. So those are basically the settings, uh, along with being able to reset. And then it says here, press the sound but button to exit. And so I'll do that. And up, oh, I already had it triggered. So now that it's on and I've exited the settings, uh, it was already above the threshold. So rate alarm pops off, pops up, and it keeps beeping until and it tells you what the threshold was and it says hold that to end. So I'll do that, and it goes back. So it's well above 0.6, and it's staying there. So it will it will not um, uh, it will not keep beeping unless it drops below and comes back up. Um, yeah, that's that's I think all the features and the noteworthy changes. Um, the, this 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 setup with this type of buttons doesn't have the gaps, so it's harder for dust and moisture to get in. It's not truly waterproof, but um, it's pretty water resistant. I wouldn't test it on on purpose, but if if it were to accidentally get wet, there's a pretty good chance it'll be it'll be fine. And there's still the waterproof case available and other things. So um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That's uh, the better Geiger S2. I think the last thing is to show how it powers down. So I didn't want um, people that accidentally bump it and lose their measurement. Um, so if I just do it a slow press, uh, it says returning. And if I do it longer, it says hold to power off. And then if I hold it for a couple seconds and then I release it, it will shut down. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you're interested in this product, go to my website and buy one. Thank you.